All right, it's about that time again. Time to send some more units out. So we've got another eight ready to go this Wednesday, December 7th at 12 p.m. Eastern Central Time. It's the same time as last time. So we've got eight kits ready to go, and I've been working pretty hard, getting a, a lot more of them put together, but I've actually run out of parts. <laughs> now, uh, I just want to clarify real quick that these are still in beta, okay? This is still a beta, and they might not be 100% perfect. You know, you might have issues, it might not work at all. I don't like saying that, because I really want them to work, but sometimes you might have issues. Uh, one of the guys from the first batch said that he was getting some on-screen errors, uh, so I'm trying to look into that now. I didn't get any other issues from anyone else, so, you know, so I guess one board out of the bunch isn't too bad, and, you know, I'll happily, you know, uh, send him a new one if he, if he returns the old one and stuff like that if we can't get it worked out, so I will help you guys, you know, I'm not going to leave you in the dirt if the unit doesn't work, but just remember, this is a work in progress, and they're not going to be perfect, so, you know, have a little patience. <laughs> I've been working hard, but uh, there's still, these things always surprise me with bugs. But just, just be aware of that, you know, they're not the easiest to update, and they might give you problems, but if they do work, they're freaking sweet. So we'll hope for the best, but prepare for the worst. The eBay link is uh, scheduled for a specific time, so the link will not go live until noon, or if you're in a different part of the world, whatever time that comes out to. But if you click on it beforehand, it won't load. It'll just give you an error and say that the link, like, didn't work or something. So make sure that you click it after it goes live. If you click it before, you're not going to get anything. So I'll show you what it looks like. And so uh, make sure that you follow my Facebook page or the Instagram because that's where all the information is going to be. And this is where you're going to find out about stuff first. So the link will always be up here on the, uh, the pinned post. So if we click this right now, if I click it since I'm logged in, it'll show me the site. So if I take this link and... Um, open it up in a browser I'm not signed into, we're going to get this. So this is the error code that you're going to get that it's been removed or it's not available. If you see this, you clicked it too early. So you're going to have to reload the page until the link goes live. I'm, I'm hoping that the that was the issue and not that the link itself was having issues because I know a couple people couldn't get on and I really want you guys to be able to get these things. So there'll, there'll be plenty of chances to get these, but again, just make sure you click it <laughs> when it's live. Uh, more exciting stuff, we are going to be shipping international this time. Yeah, baby, you heard me right. All you guys that have been waiting, pa waiting patiently since, you know, the very beginning of this, it's finally your turn. Um, now, again, these are probably going to sell out pretty quickly, but when I get all the parts and put them together, I'm sure you guys will get, uh, you'll, you'll get a chance to get them. Uh, shipping is going to be, I'm, I'm going to charge uh, the actual shipping cost for international. That could be anywhere from 20 to $35, depending on where you live. I'm going through uh, the United States Postal Service, so uh, you know that'll just be charged. So just remember, it, it'll be more than 75. So if you guys are interested, it could be, you know, 85 to 100 bucks even uh, to ship internationally. But I, you know, I wanted to at least give you guys some support. So that'll be exciting. Then the next um, time, the next sale will probably be bigger, so you might have a better chance. Also, if you guys want different days or different times for one of these guys to go live, let me know. <laughs> I'm just kind of doing whatever. Yeah, I've been pumping out these things nonstop. This printer has been a champ. I've been running this thing like, you know, almost 24-7. Every time uh, a part's done, I put a new one in and get that thing ready to go. It's It's been running so long that I actually ran out of plastic, so I ordered a lot more plastic. And I've been busy putting these all together. It's the, these guys take forever to put together. <laughs> so i got to wait for more adapters to come. Um, so they should be here in a couple weeks. Uh, I ran out of plastic, so I gotta wait for more plastic to come. That should be here by the end of the week. And, uh, I ran out of screens, and they should be here by the end of the week, too. So, once these final couple shipments come in, I should have enough parts to finish all the boards. So I can finish all 44 of these guys, and, uh, hopefully get them shipped out to you. So, it's a lot of parts and a lot of stuff I've been keeping organized, but we are you know, looking good so far. Not too many issues. So, uh, yeah, that should be exciting. But uh, for now, we got eight of these. So I've been working very hard putting all these guys together. <laughs> it takes a lot of time. Okay, so there's that. So now I've got a couple questions for you guys um, as for the future uh, kits and stuff like that. So, number one, is anyone interested in positive screens? 
Now, what, what I mean by that is, if you guys have watched from the beginning, I originally got what was called a positive screen. So if you'll notice, it's gray instead of black. So if we plug this guy in, this is what a positive screen looks like. The, the text is black and the background is color. So if we go to options, display, uh, that's not right. Come on, try it again. Display. So that's what the positive version looks like. Now the only um, like true benefit that this screen has is that um, it, it is visible in um, even the brightest lights possible. The, the text is what actually reflects or technically I guess blocks the sunlight or whatever but you can read this in you know in the middle of the sun if you wanted to with the negatives sometimes they start to fade away and the text becomes clear so it's a little harder to read in really bright sunlight but you know when it's inside the car and stuff like that it's not really noticeable but if you're interested I ordered like two or three of these screens so um if you want a positive version it might take a couple more days for me to build one just because I'm gonna specially build them uh, in case anyone wants them but if not the the stock option is going to be negative for sure so yeah that's that's number one is uh, if anyone would be interested in positive screens I know almost everyone's interested in negative but if there's a few let me know uh, number two what would you guys think about for a kit version of this um, would, would any of you guys be interested in getting all these parts in a, in a little bag so you get yourself a blank board just like this and you'll get a baggie with all the components so you'll get a bunch of resistors uh, you'll get one of these Arduino um, trinket pros you'll get the headers that you need um, pins, switches, uh, LEDs, light sensors, all that stuff you'll, you'll get everything in the, the adapters so it'll all come in a little bag and you got to put it together so you grab yourself a soldering iron and you put them together they will be offered at a discounted rate um, probably either 60 or 65 I gotta decide it might be closer to 60 but um, you would install them in uh, the the height so you, you install the smallest ones first so this is all the resistors and diodes in there you make sure these face the right way and the reason why you go um, lowest first is because when you flip it over that way they all sit flat as you solder them on so that's all you're doing is you're sitting here and soldering all these pins on and snipping them and then you work your way up so then you'll do you know whatever's next big and stuff so you'll solder the the headers on for the pro trinket you put the transistor in there you put this guy in there contrast all that and then last but not least you'll hit the you'll put the screen in the screen's a little tricky because the LED has to bend around the screen a little bit. I actually made a custom case like this. So that way um, I can actually get to the pins and solder them. You, you gotta put it in the board because otherwise the screen might get soldered on sideways. But you can reach them like this. You will be able to get your soldering iron in there and get them all. It's a little tricky, but you know, all the components are big. There's no surface mount or stuff like this. So if you know how to use a soldering iron, you could probably do it. Um, I am going to make the adapters though, just because you need a crimp tool. So I don't want you, I don't want to put you guys through that. So the adapters will still come fully made. But let me know uh, if any of you guys would be interested in a kit, and you know if sixty bucks sounds reasonable for something you you know you build yourself. Um, next up would be, uh, is anyone interested in a modifiable version, sort of kind of like one that's more designed for people that you know like to mess around with electronics and stuff like that. And what I mean is um, a different board. So this right here is the uh, the Metro Mini. I've talked about this before. It's basically an Arduino Uno, but really small. I'd have to build a custom board to accept it because right now the um, the Pro Trinket and the Metro Mini have different footprints and they have different pinouts. But it would look just like this. It would just have you know a couple extra pins and it'd be rerouted. But I'd probably spin up about ten boards. Uh, the fancy thing about these is they have serial out, and what that means is. Uh, the data on the vehicle could get sent to the computer and stuff you, you could other send you could send other things to the computer and things like that so if you wanted to do something like data logging where you wanted to save the data onto a computer and look at it later 
or you know other other stuff like that you just want to transmit the data and see it on a computer screen instead you could do that with this the other nice thing is these are really easy to update the pro trinkets are a pain to update they need you know drivers and software and board um, presets and you got to make sure you're within the eight second bootloader time with this there's none of that crap you plug this in and it's always ready to accept code you can upload it through the arduino uno and i'll show you what i mean by that in the Arduino software, when you have to install these, you have to go through tools, you have to set it to Pro Trinket, which you have to download and install this. You're going to go and change the programmer to USB Tiny, and then you upload it. Well, if we use the, the other board, the Metro Mini, you can literally just use the Uno and the standard programmer and you just set your port and it just uploads in your set so you can just click upload and it just it goes to town and it does all the stuff you need real easy real simple you might have to install a driver the uh, FTDI driver and that's it so these are also a lot easier to update um, the only reason I didn't include these on all the boards is because they're five bucks more and that doesn't sound like much but again it would bring the price up to at least eighty dollars a unit and that's a whole lot more that I have to buy off the bat but they are really cool. So if anyone would be interested in a version like that, if you like playing around with stuff, this also has more pins, there's more stuff broken out. So it's just, it, again, there's more things to do. If you want to code and, you know, read stuff and do stuff, this would be what you would want. So let me know if anyone's interested in uh, any of those either. Okay, so uh, I'll be running a trade-in program. So if I ever build versions, you know, like, like things that have more uh, features and stuff like that, and you guys want to get a newer version, I'll accept the old version if it still works. So you send it back, but you pay shipping, and uh, I'll give you a heavily discounted price on the newer model. So that way, you know, for you know, maybe 20, 25 bucks or something like that, you could upgrade to the latest model if you wanted. That goes for alpha users and, you know, anything in the future, stuff like that. So there's that. Um, as for future plans, there's a couple more things I still want to tackle. Eventually, I'm going to get to you 2.5 liter guys, um, but there's different hardware involved, and that's why there's been such a big holdup. I have to do a lot of testing and figure out why the 2.5 liters are different. They have different pins on the diagnostic port, and uh, they just use all kinds of weird stuff. So, yeah, that's a bit of a pain. Um, second up, I want to figure out the automatic trans, the AW4. I would love, 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 love to get the um, communication on this device. You could read the trans as well. Exciting thing about that is you can see gears and clutch um, lock up and brake, but the big one is uh, output RPM, which you could convert to speed if you wanted. And if you can find out the vehicle's speed, I might be able to do fuel economy, and that is a huge goal of mine. I know it's stupid for Jeeps, but man, would I love to see how much fuel that thing is slurping at any given time. The transmission outputs data pretty slow, and I'd have to do some really creative coding to get them both to read at the same time, but it might be possible. But, you know, that's that's kind of a long-term goal for the future. And uh, as for later later years, like the 1991 and newer Chryslers, I don't know, you guys are pretty far back in the list. Uh, this project on its own has just been very time-consuming, so I don't know if I'll ever be able to get to that. But hey, this might make a good platform if you want to try to make your own. <laughs> Talk to me. We might be able to figure some stuff out. A couple people have been interested in tuning and stuff like that. So... You know, maybe I'll figure out how to do um, piggyback sensors to maybe do your own tuning at some point. But again, that's you know, lots of time and effort, and we'll see if we ever get there, if we do. But uh, Another idea that came to mind at one point was, what would you guys think of um, having a unit that replaces the, uh, the dash clock, you know, to the right of the gauge cluster? I think that would be interesting. I have to, you know, find a fake one or, you know, just get one out of a junkyard to play around with for sizes. But I could probably 3D print, you know, a completely replaceable thing. And the screen looks like it should fit in that opening. So if we could do something like that, where you have the, the screen in there, and then maybe have the buttons on the bottom or the top. Uh, I mentioned to one person, and they said maybe uh, have the buttons remotely um, active somewhere, where it comes off a wire and you could mount it somewhere else. And that's also possible. I just have to make another circuit board or figure out something for that. But it's not completely impossible. But, um, yeah, that would be another future long-term goal, maybe some experimentation, but that would be a pretty cool factory-looking option. 
So let me know what you think of that. Yeah, all right, I guess that's all for now. I'm going to shut up. So Wednesday, get one if you want. They're going to sell out quick. Thanks for the support.